Welcome to the Be Dadly Podcast, where we discuss all things dadly, from being an entrepreneur while caring for toddlers, to raising screenagers and talking the birds and the bees. We're here to help you traverse the vast and dynamic landscape of fatherhood. Enjoy practical advice, lots of puns, and even a few heart-touching moments. And the dad jokes are pretty good, too. And now your host, Brandon Jones. And just like that, we are back, folks. Welcome back to the Be Dadly Show. I am Brandon Jones, your host. And today I have Derek Stark. Derek is an awesome coach. Found him online. He uh, has coach dash stark.com. Check him out on his website. He helps men lose stubborn fat and keep that weight off uh, in as little as three hours a week. So you can get more time with your family. If that sounds like something that might interest you, I think you're going to really like this podcast. We're going to get to ask Derek a lot of great questions, give you guys some great takeaways, and then also give you an opportunity to work with Derek at the end. If, if that's something you'd be interested in, Derek's been doing this for nine years. He focuses on nutrition, lifestyle, mindset, and exercise. We had a lot in common, including faith, uh, but also just when I was looking through his videos and stuff, I was like, man, this guy knows how to put out there really succinct messages about what you need to do um, to optimize your life. And I think you'll really like his, uh, his website and his Instagram page, um, but we'll get more into that later. Let's get into the good stuff. Derek, thank you for being here. Awesome. Great to be here, Brandon. Always happy to connect. Yeah. So, all right. So what got you passionate about this weight loss or even just like training and, and helping these guys? What, what got you passionate about that? Yeah. I mean, it all started since kind of high school, you know, with playing sports and, you know, you, you pretty much do everything at that age. And I found myself as, as a, an all rounder. I was good at everything. So pretty much dabbled around in some construction stuff and then moved into um, getting in the gym, started lifting weights when I was uh, 17. Then I saw this is something that I enjoy. So quite after that, I qualified, started coaching anyone and everyone, you know, in the early stages. And then um, it became important to me to, to find out who I resonate with most and how I can help them to, to the best of my ability. So that is where now I, I coach specifically dads um, because I know what they struggle with and, and, and that's really what I focus on. Yeah, that's great. Now, when, you, when you're working with somebody, these, you know, these guys, they obviously, we all know, I mean, they know it, everybody knows it, um, like, they have a bad habit, right? They have some bad habits. And how do you, you know, how do you address these? Because it's obvious, like when we're busy, we're stressed, we're, we're trying to be great dads, we're trying to build businesses, or we're trying to be a great you know, employee sometimes, or really drive the ship of a company or whatever it might be. We're busy, we're stressed, all these things. But what do you do to help them like crack the code if they already feel overwhelmed? How do they introduce something like an exercise routine and get in there and break up some of the patterns um, that are causing the, the fat in general? Yeah, so, so really the, the biggest thing that we start with is, is just starting small because some of the men that I coach have, you know, uh, multiple businesses or the senior level positions in well-established companies amongst the pressure from work and also, you know, family commitments. They have two, three, four, five kids. So you can imagine that the, their time is, is, is squeezed so much. So we focus on starting small, something that is realistic, sustainable for the individual's current schedule. Um, and then teaching our clients to set daily non-negotiables. Like if you really want to live a healthy, happy life to be around for your kids longer, then you need to be focusing on daily tasks. It's not an all or nothing attitude. It's, it's small daily increments and setting non-negotiables that you could set up um, a time of 30 minutes, 45 minutes to do a workout, you know? So really it's, it's non-negotiable, start small um, and make sure that it's, it's something that you can sustain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest thing that, I, you know, I think people probably struggle with. I know even for me personally, I go to change something and I make it so grand. 
It's got to be so big. I've got to make it like the, you know, I'm going to meditate one hour a day, every day of the week for like years straight, 10 years, you know? And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you don't meditate five minutes a day. How are you going to go to an hour? You know, you're just going to become a monk all of a sudden. And so it's, we put this pressure on ourselves. There's way too much pressure uh, where, like you're saying, it's like, it, let's start small. Let's start where we get the momentum. Um, uh, some, well, one of the things I've always taught was establish a routine and then you can optimize it, you know, yeah. establish a rhythm so that then you can improve it. And I love the terminology to the non-negotiable that we establish a non-negotiable. This is not something that's up for negotiation. Um, I just love that. I really love that mindset. It's like, if we stamp that on it, this is how it's going to go today, period. Um, very, very cool, man. And so, yeah, when, when you're working with these guys, you know, and you're looking for these, these non-negotiables, these, these small wins, how much of it is, is like something that's really, 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 uh, personal and how much of it, like, would you say anyone could apply, you know, these ideas to like, what, what are the exact things that you're looking at? Is it, is it basically like how much food they're ingesting or does it, or is it just like, Hey, it's not necessarily about how much it's about like what kind of food you're ingesting. And, you know, this is kind of a bad question. I feel like I'm asking a bad question, but I guess my point is, is, or the question is, is what parts of when you're working with them are extremely uh, specific and personalized and what are some of the things that, you know, everyone can kind of work on if they just take a look at, at those things? Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Really it's down to the nutrition and the training is probably the biggest too. That's, that's most personalized, obviously with different uh, dietary requirements and, and things like that. So that, that is very personalized, but from a more broader spectrum when it comes to habits um, mm. you know, we, we, we are habits, everything we do, we are creatures of habits. So arguably when it comes to the, the program where we transform men, dads into living a he healthy, happy life is, is habits because everything we do is a habit. So the habits are very much more about, you know, your activity, how much you're moving because often they're office based jobs, right? Um, to, you know, planning your meals in advance or planning for the week, what you're going to eat. And then we come down to more laser-focused stuff with the nutrition, you know, the macros and how much protein for this guy and how much calories and making a system that's easy between meetings that they can um, grab, grab food on the go, making the best possible choices of the mm -hmm. food options they have available because meeting to meeting, they just grab whatever's there. Most often than not with the nutrition, it's the 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 diet is more carb dense, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they, they tend to eat more carbs, which they're highly palatable. Um, they taste amazing, so people tend to overeat on them. When really, as men, if you want to kind of drop body fat, gain some lean muscle, and look lean, then you need to be eating a, more protein, right? Mm -hmm. So that's probably the biggest areas that we see challenges um and then training is just like yeah the all or nothing attitude i need to go to the gym and, and do one hour 30 minutes workout and you know like smash myself to to having doms and not feeling like you can walk where that's not the reality there's a much more optimal training system that you can still feel fresh every other day mm. you only have some doms but you're going to be recovering better from a diff different training routine and also, we like to focus on full body training. We train the body as, as a one mechanism, as one machine. Mm. So the full body, when you train full body workouts, you get a full body pump, and you're not going to be walking the next day like, like John Wayne, like you can't walk down the stairs. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's like, it's just something that is, I mean, I, I, I think about it in a more, Coaching perspective, why? Because everyone goes to the gym, chest and back, uh, chest and, and tries, back and buys and, and leg. Yeah. You do so much volume. Um, you exhaust the muscles, your legs, to then to the point that you get extreme doms and, and 
a lot of people don't enjoy that. Why, why right. do you want extreme doms when you can do something that's more enjoyable without getting that much pain? Mm-hmm. And for those of you listening, by the way, that don't know what DOMS is, that's delayed onset muscle soreness. Right. And so when he's saying DOMS and getting extreme DOMS, this is like what happens is the next day you just feel so incredibly sore. I mean, like painfully sore. It feels like somebody has been re- like beat on you. And actually the following day after that, a lot of times it's actually even more sore. <laughs> so it's like, you would think the next day it would get better. No, the, the it's it, for me, my experience has been, you feel fine the first day, the next day you're like sore. The third day you're really sore. And then you start to feel a little better as, as you go. Yeah. And I really love your approach here to this like full body you know, like, Hey, we're going to go full body and see the body as one mechanism. I, I really love that as one machine, um, because it all does work together. Um, but yes, a lot of the, a lot of the more bodybuilding style techniques out there are separating mm-hmm. and picking apart the body. What ends up happening, um, is people get imbalances and injuries happen this way. And so you, your approach here, I love this, Derek, is like taking it and saying, hey, let's look at the whole body. Let's work the whole body. One, we're going to reduce that those DOMs. And two, we're actually going to use it in a more functional way, in a more efficient way. And, and I love that full body pump. Get a full body pump on that. And yeah. then just kind of reiterating what you're saying is like, the diet is, yes, it's personalized because everybody kind of needs a different mix of those macros. So we're talking fat, proteins, and, you know, your micronutrients, but also your carbs. So there's carbs, fat, protein, and and carbs. You're going to need a different mixture there. Uh, but as you said, it's almost like a pretty big blanket you could kind of throw over most people is they're overly consuming carbs. Yeah. And when you're overly consuming carbs... Yeah from my experience, uh, from overly consuming carbs, uh, is you get a lot of these ups and downs. You get these big spikes, uh, where your, your blood sugar is way high and you've got lots of loads of energy and then huge, uh, you know, it kind of comes down. You're almost like a kite. You can fly up and then you crash, fly up and then you crash where it's much better to be almost like a submarine. You slowly emerge up, you stay at that level and you can come down slowly as well. Yeah, yeah. Could we pause for two seconds? Absolutely. Awesome. One second. Okay, I'm back. Awesome. So, okay, awesome. So I I love, I love everything that you're saying here. Um, Now, whenever, you know, when these guys, I'm, I'm thinking like when you're working with them, what's the interaction like? Like if I'm a guy and I'm sitting here, I'm just like, man, you know, I kind of like what these guys are talking about. I know I need to lose the weight. Uh, I know I have bad habits and I I'm resonating. I'm busy. That's one of the biggest hurdles I've had so far. What does it look like if they jump in and get started with you? Like how, how does it work? So, yeah, I mean, it really starts off with doing a lot of fact finding Mm-hmm. So finding out more about the lifestyle, time constraints, habits, um, personal life, and starting off coaching them on, on a clear roadmap. Okay, you want to say 12 weeks, 90 days, this is what we want to achieve. Then the first four weeks in the phase one, we're going to be taking care of um, simple habits, laying the foundations, starting to see results in the first four weeks. So your belief system goes to an ultimate high, mm. right? Because that's, that's important for motivation. And then moving on to the next four weeks in phase two, we'll be focusing on, let's say, um, boosting the metabolism um, mm-hmm. because metabolism is so key when it comes to long lasting results. Guys want to lose weight, they go straight to crash, restrictive diets, and the metabolism gets affected in a negative way. Mm-hmm. So we focus on building the metabolism through how much calories you're eating, what food you're eating, 
and also um, the training that you're doing, right, is going to be very important. Then the last phase, you would focus more on, okay, all the, the foundational habits, um, the systems that were set in place, the habits routine from the previous weeks. It's just compounding on top of that and just doing it even more, even more, or increasing the, the, the volume. And then really that's kind of traditionally 12 weeks where you would get fantastic, f- fantastic results. We, I want to highlight something that you said, and I want you to drill in on this for me, okay? Because I see a lot of guys struggle with this and girls, but so many people want to lose weight. So they do those New Year's resolutions and they crash diet. They, they just remove everything. Basically, they go on these huge fast, whatever it might be. And sure, they lose some weight, but what they don't realize is that they're not losing the right kind of weight. Like a lot of times they're losing muscle mass, which is awful. Mm-hmm. And it's killing the metabolism. You just said that you were saying this crash dieting can kill the metabolism. Can you, can you speak to that a little bit and tell our listeners, like, why is it that, you know, for example, if somebody just goes on this extreme diet for say 30 days or whatever, yeah, they might see weight loss, but a lot of times they get the weight back. They get, Mm -hmm. they go back into a regular routine. The weight comes back maybe one and a half times what it was before, but why is that? What is it doing to the metabolism that's causing this, this issue of these ups and downs, these people that are trying to lose weight and they crash diet. So, so the metabolism, metabolism is so key that when you focus on getting long lasting results is that you try and boost the metabolism to work for you. Mm -hmm. Um, because really what metabolism, metabolism is, is it's burning calories at rest, mm-hmm. right? So metabolism is key. Um, up to 70% of the whole calories you burn in a full day will come from your, your rest, resting um, calories. So that's very key. When it comes to the crash diets, what happens is you go straight into a restrictive diet, probably cutting out a lot of carbs, low energy, um, you're lethar- lethargic, um, and you're not seeing the results that you would want to see in the initial stages. So then the belief and the motivation goes to an ultimate low. Mm. And then you're like, okay, it worked for a couple of weeks, then it didn't work, and then it's just a vicious cycle and it's not sustainable. So with metabolism, it's directly correlated to your muscle mass, Right, because uh, a tissue in the body that that requires the most calories, requires the most energy. So, mm-hmm. the more muscle mass that you have, the more calories you will burn at rest. So, that is why with the men we coach, we focus on yeah building muscle, but also you know cardiovascular benefits and cardio and stuff like that. So, we boost the metab- metabolism throughout the twelve weeks. So. Their metabolism is at an ultimate high. It's working for them. They're burning calories much easier than they ever were. Where all the guys that I speak to that have done keto, um, low carb, all these diets that where what happens is it's not sustainable. Um, your, your metabolism will get affected in a negative way when you reduce the calories so much. Um, people do... 500 to 800 calories less than the body needs, which is is too much in the beginning. So Mm -hmm. it has to be, when you change your mindset to a long-term result, then you start to think, what what do I need to do daily to get long? Effects, short-term, and they will restrict everything short-term to get a quick quick result. But then, like you said, we go back and put the weight back on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've heard this great analogy that's always stuck with me is that metabolism is kind of like a fire and you have a small fire and you put a big log on it. You basically put the fire, you put the fire out. And so that looks like if you have a, your metabolism is not burning at a really high rate and you put a lot of food on it, it's just going to take so long for it to burn it. However, if you had your metabolism burning, think about like a gymnast or a dancer, somebody who literally is burning so many calories through their, through their exercise, their hobby or whatever, they could eat an entire pizza and you'll never see them gain 
a pound. And the reason is that their metabolism is burning so much higher. It's almost like the fire. If I had a really hot fire and I threw a log in there, it's going to incinerate that log. If the metabolism is high, it, it, it's the same thing. If you throw that food in there, you can burn it. In, in other words, if you get that metabolism high, like Derek's talking about, you can get to a point with enough lean mass that you can eat kind of crazy. Like you can eat some things that you wouldn't have been able to eat before. And you can actually start to enjoy those meals you so desperately want to enjoy guilt-free because you have a higher metabolism. You can burn things off faster. And this comes through that lean mass. This comes through increasing your lean mass, which is basically muscle increasing your muscle so that you can burn calories at rest and you're going to burn them at such a high rate. You can get rid of that, uh, food. So if you have a a vacation and you happen to splurge on the cruise ship, you're not going to destroy so many of your gains. Obviously, if you also have great habits, you're not going to eat quite as bad as you were either. So it's a compound effect right? Like you've built these great habits and you're also burning much more calories. So Thanksgiving comes around, Christmas comes around, you're not going to feel so scared. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the ultimate place because we we are not robots, we're humans. We we want to enjoy life, social events, family. And to to some of the men that we coach, they they get to a point where the metabolism is at our ultimate high. It's more effective. And the flexibility that they have going into social situations is something that they never believed they could have done before because they've always known is is crash diets. And Mm. it's really just a change of mentality and teaching them, okay, this is long-term, this is what we're going to do. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's sustainable and you you really thank me for in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's reminding me too that, when you, you know, one of the things that happens, I feel like is when we do these, these, uh, exercise routines and stuff, what people miss is that the first thing they think is I got to keep watching the scale. I got to keep watching the scale. So they go to the gym, they start pushing weight and all of a sudden they're looking at the scale and the scale is going up Mm -hmm. and they're confused. They're confused because they're putting in the work. And you said, like you said, the, their, their confidence and their belief system is going down because they're putting in work and the scale is going up. Mm -hmm. But what they don't know a lot of the times is that they're building muscle. The muscle is responding to the exercise and muscle. It weighs more than fat or it's more dense than fat. I shouldn't say it weighs, you know, it weighs what it weighs. <laughs> it can't weigh more than fat, but it's more dense than fat. So for yeah. example, uh, five pounds of fat looks almost like a very small, like loaf of bread, but five pounds of muscle looks like a fist. Yes. So, so when we're building this muscle and a lot of times people that are a little bit heavier, they build muscle fast. So they're going to build this muscle fast. Now the scale's saying they're going up in weight, but what they might miss is they're going down in inches. They're trading fat for muscle and they're go they're, the weight's going up for a second, but you got to stay long-term. You got to stick with this long-term mindset and not think that you're in it just for the 30 day, like the 30 day crash diet. You're not in it for 30 days. You're in it for a lifestyle. You're in it for you 2.0. And I really love this post I saw recently. Uh, this is from Larry Hagner and he's, he was talking about him on his training programs. And he said, you know, his trainer was talking to him and he said, Hey, I want to be brutally honest with you. I've seen you do amazing, amazing work. And then I see you go back down and I see you do amazing work. And I see you go back down. He's like, here's what I need you to do. Larry 2.0 needs to let go of Larry 1.0. And part of this going to that long term is saying, hey, I'm becoming someone new. And when I am new, I've got to let go of that old me that's no longer serving me. Served me at one point, sure. Got me to one place, great. But now we're going into a 2.0, another uh, expression of myself. And the long term thinking here is I've got to start to let go of that me that is just falling back into the old habits, which is easy for us to all slide into. It's very easy to slide into the hypnotic rhythm of life and just start being our old, our old self again. Um, But it's about staying on, keeping that switch on. How do you help these guys keep that on? 
And maybe you have a different perspective too. I want to open it up because I don't want to impose that belief system on you. Maybe you believe both can coexist, but what, what are your thoughts on that? And, and also how would you help them stay on uh, when they want to slide back into those old habits? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Really. The, there's a great book you've probably heard about um, atomic habits by James clear. Yes. Love him. Awesome book. Love you that know, book. He, yeah. He talks about small habits done consistently equate to big results. Um, and that, that's the mindset. But when it comes to, slipping back into your old self um, really it, it starts with who do, who do you wish to identify yourself to be mm. right so if I'm say corporate level employee 30 pounds overweight but I wish to become you know like uh, Ryan who's in the other office who's lean uh, in a higher level position, then if you identify yourself to be like kind of what he has or maybe like some um, one of your favorite kind of superheroes or anything like that, you have to think about what does that person do on a daily basis, right? Okay, if I identify myself to be a football player, then, you know, I'm going to be training every other day I'm going to be eating healthy food. I'm going to be stretching, you know, habits, drinking water, quality sleep, um, you know, stuff like that. So first it starts with, well, you need to keep reminding yourself, I identify, I identify myself to be this person, this person who has good habits, good routine, good nutrition, um, works out regular. Then you start, okay, well, I need to act on that. Um, and the biggest thing with habits is really we, we have to understand our habits firstly. And we do that by identifying the habits, right? So we first identify what are we doing on a daily basis, recognizing what cues or triggers are in our environment that sets the habit into motion. So simply... Being aware of the cure is a great start to breaking the cycle. Um, and there's triggers everywhere in an environment. Um, driving home from work, you see McDonald's. You know, there's a trigger everywhere. So even sometimes I say to my clients, well, because they have a habit of going getting a Big Mac, I say, well, you change, change your, your route. The route. Absolutely. Out. Change that route. <laughs> You know, it so, sounds crazy, but if you don't drive by there, you're way less likely to stop by. It's it's crazy, and it's the habits is arguably the hard habits and nutrition is the biggest thing that I coach on because, yeah, I mean, you know, training is just a small part, which I could talk about later on, but it's it's important for boosting met metabolism. So we we really focus on breaking bad habits, identifying the triggers, and and removing those triggers from your environment so it becomes uh, easier for you to uh, to break the habit, right, which is key. So we've got the trigger. Then after the trigger becomes the, the action, right? So like um, you, see, you see someone drinking a can of soda, then you act on it, you go buy a can of soda, and then you, you start drinking it. And then after that becomes... The reward so we reward ourselves with how did that make us feel you know if it's grabbing a donut and then you have this dopamine high of the sugar rush um and and then you get a reward at the end of it so our minds are constantly in a, in a habit loop where we where we associate the the trigger with the reward and then you're just in this vicious cycle and you're like okay if i eat this donut i know i'm gonna feel like this Tempora temporarily. So it's just a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. Man, you've just said, I mean, there's <laughs> every, there's so much gold in what you just said. I want to start from part of the beginning that you said that I, I just, it, you have to underline this and this has come up now. If you're, if you're an active listener and you've listened to our podcast a while, it, it seems to be a recurring theme. We've had several people say this one. I want to highlight Luke Jensen for saying this last time, Luke Jensen said something. It was such a good distinction. He said, it's not about what you're doing. 
It's about who you're becoming. Yeah. And, and, you know, Derek just said this again, it's not, it's not so much about, uh, you know, the old you or whatever. It's about who do you want to be? Yeah. Who are you connecting your mind with? That's that you, that's the better you, it's the optimist, it's, it's the best self, it's, it's that version of you that is your, your vision, right? And, and maybe you use a role model, maybe it's a person in the office, like you said, you know, hey, what's Ryan doing over there in that office, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, something he's doing is working, I want to think like him, I want to act like him, well, oh, he trains, okay, he trains, oh, he diets, okay, I want to make sure I do that, so but either way, it does. What, what's important here, the fundamental is it's about who you are becoming. Mm-hmm. Who do you want to become? And then, and then mapping and saying, hey, are these behaviors consistent with who I am becoming? Love that, man. I really love that. And then also you touched on James Clear. So if you guys haven't read Atomic Habits, highly recommend the book. The gist is this. Um it was kind of like we started this conversation where we said, okay, well, you could start meditating for an hour a day, but you don't meditate five minutes. Um, The bigger uh, hurdle or the, or the big, it's not a hurdle, actually. It's a reducing the hurdle into something that is you're capable of doing. If you said, I want to meditate, it's reducing it down to the smallest form of what gets you started. Right. And atomic habits is, He's talking about these tiny little, little bitty, 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 bitty things, right? So for example, uh, let's use reading a book. I want to start reading a book, uh, one book a month, right? Pretty big hurdle. If you have, if you're not reading a book right now, it's a pretty big hurdle. So what James would say is read a page actually better than that. Read a sentence. Yeah. Because if you read a sentence, you're likely to read a paragraph. And if you read a paragraph, you're likely to read a page and so on and so forth until guess what? You look up and you read a book. So what you got to do is you got to reduce these things down to their simplest form. And obviously working with a professional like Derek, he can help you identify what do we need to reduce down in those simple forms? What are going to be the habits that are going to get you the most leverage? What are going to be the things we need to stop doing? Because obviously there are certain things that are having a big impact on us. And one of the things I've learned in in, uh, all of my habit coaching and habit research is what you stop matters more than what you start. Mm-hmm. And a yeah. lot of people think that they need to start an exercise routine. They need to start, you know, going to this gym, fancy gym. They need to start all these things. But actually, what you stop doing and those bad habits that are creating those outcomes have a really big effect. One of the reasons is because you're going to regain the resources it takes to uphold it. So if it yeah. takes time, energy, and money, you're going to get that back. Right. Yeah. And number two, the results are going to get to the bottom line a little faster. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just awesome habits. We could speak about this all day long because it's just a huge topic. You know, everything we do is a habit. So often guys will be like, or guys that I speak to that don't join the program, but but they, for whatever reason, if it's, you know, maybe they're looking for the perfect time, which in reality, there's no perfect time, right? Mm. Procrastination uh, really steals our dreams because we procrastinate so much and it's just stealing away your dream from yourself mm. so you're effectively being robbed but what they what they try and do is like okay I'm going to work out five days per week when they've not been working out before which is really unrealistic and not sustainable really you should focus on something so, so much smaller than that and what I like to call it is is the lead domino. So if you want to go to the gym five days per week and you've not been doing it before, well, you actually need to turn off the TV earlier. Right. At 9 9 p.m. so that you go to bed earlier and then you can wake up in time to go to the gym. But if you're still living your normal life, watching TV till 11 p.m., then trying to sleep by 12 and then wake up at 7.36 a.m. to work out. It's, that's not where the focus should be. The focus is more often not at home because we, all our habits are at home. And the lead domino is, is turning off the TV earlier, 9 p.m., so you sleep by 10 p.m. So things like that, people need to understand that 
start small, identify the habits and look for the lead domino that's going to be a knock-on effect to doing the five workouts per week. Gosh, that is such good advice. Look for the lead domino. And I love that you make it, you're making the connection that one, if you try to stuff it in with everything you're already doing, it's not going to work. You actually need to change. You need to create the space for something like this to occur, for it to live, for it to thrive, for it to even set root at all. And you connect to the dots that, Hey, guess what? That next morning it's connected to the night before. And sometimes we think of them as two separate days when really it's a continuum. Right. And so if we're not paying attention to the night before, did we turn the TV off a little earlier? And that's the thing that we start in order to get the opportunity to be our best tomorrow. I love that, man. I, I, I love that. You, you know, we resonate so deeply, Derek. I'm telling you, I, I really, this is, this is the kind of stuff, life-changing stuff that we have to connect these ideas, starting small, you know, making sure we create space, making sure that we're focused on who we want to become mm-hmm. uh, and removing those things. Those and, and, and there was a part there that I also wanted to highlight was that removing the triggers and the cues Mm-hmm. so that that routine doesn't automatically go in. Cause it can do it so quickly. We are not even conscious of that thing. Uh, so removing those, those triggers and those cues is so, so, so critical to the point where, like you said, maybe it's even changing the route that you're taking so that you're not triggered uh, by those things. I, I like to think of of breaking habits, by the way. Habits are such a monumental thing. Like you said, everything we do is a habit. Mm -hmm. We are our habits. I like to think of it as a war. I mean, you are at war with a thing that is kind of trying to take away your dreams, just like you said, it's your dreams. And I like to think that those little triggers, those little places where we are triggered and cues, those are the battlefields. Because that's where it is going to go down. Am I going to win the battle at those triggers and those cues? Now, let me just say this. Something that's important for everybody to know is do you sometimes people lose a battle and they and they then just decide to exit and they stop? Mm -hmm. There are wars that are won where battles were lost. Yeah. Amen. You can win the war. But one thing I'll tell you is that when you, when you lose a battle and you accidentally slip and you go back into your old ways, my best advice to you is do not lose twice. The amount of momentum you lose when you lose twice, it's just like you need to put your back against the wall and you need to say, no, 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 no. I lost that last battle. I haven't lost the war, but I will not lose twice and get right back into it. And also have some way to record your streak, because if you can see a visual streak, you don't want to break it. So you got to, you got to be ready to, to win those and and, and work those triggers. And one other thing is, you know, we were talking about, you said triggers and cues are everywhere. And it was like, they're in your ride to work. (laughs) They're on the TV. They're in your home in every, every different place. You know, if you have a habit of say, for example, smoking or something, I'm sure you have lighters around and ashtrays around and the smoke around and the packs around always there, all of those would be triggers, every single one of them. But some of the triggers that you might not think of is time of day, people, environments are a huge trigger. You know, if you're trying to quit drinking, for example, let me go ahead and set up a number of triggers. Okay. Let's look at time. It's Friday. Let's look at place. You're at home after work. Let's look at people. Your friends have come over, mm-hmm. right? Let's look right. So now we got time, place, and people. And we have this, and now we've created this context. We said it's Friday. So if it's Friday after work and you're at home with friends, what time is it in your mind? If you're a drinker, it's drinking time, right? So that's going to be a really big combo. That's a pack of triggers just coming at you. You got to mitigate those. You've got to get ahead of them and say, Hey, what are the triggers that get me? Does that mean that you're not gonna be able to have friends over or you're going to have to avoid Fridays? No, it means that you got to be aware that those are going to be the battlegrounds. That's the place you're going to have the biggest war. Yeah, that's that's so huge. What you were touching on there is like there's another quote that I love is you don't decide your future, 
your habits decide your future, mm. right? Your habits decide your future. Once you you repeat that to yourself and it sinks in, you're like, you know, it, it makes so much sense. And when it comes to, like you said, um, breaking bad habits, is if you've got um, kind of multiple layers between the habit, then it makes it much more difficult. Like, for example, if it's, you know, productivity, um, then phones are just so much of a distraction when you're trying to work. So if you want to add, like, kind of three la- layers of, um, three layers between that habit is, one, um, turning your phone off. Right. Two, putting the phone in, in the other bedroom. Right. You know, like things like that, there's, there's two layers, but you could really extend that to make it three layers or, you know, something like that. So, and that's for anything. When when the friction of the habit is, is high, it makes it much more, how can I say, it makes it easier for us to stop that habit, right? But when the friction of the habit is low, it makes it much more easier. So, we need to be strategic, and that's what we coach on: is how to make it easier and harder to to break a bad habit and to adopt a new habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying. You're saying create some insulation, right? Create mechanisms that insulate you from it. And one, you and and the, or the second thing you said, what there was that uh, make it easy for you to succeed, and make it hard for you to fail. Most people do it the opposite. Right. Just like we said, if you're trying to take on five days of training, right, with five, five, one and a half hour training sessions and currently not training, are you trying to do these crash diets? You're trying to do all these things. You're trying to not, you're trying to just cram all this stuff in. You're making it really hard to succeed. It's really, really, really hard to see it. And it's really easy to, f- to fail. Yeah. But if you did the opposite and you focus on these tiny things and you look at things as a more systematic thing, and you look at the way you want to become and all these things, you're actually, by especially by focusing on small things and making sure you know where those triggers are, you're actually making it a lot easier for you to succeed, especially with like things like insulating yourself by setting yourself up for success and making it really, really difficult to fail. You know, when I was working with clients, we, one of the things that we used to talk about is I'd say, Hey, your pantry, think of your pantry and your stomach or your refrigerator as your stomach. So if I walked into your pantry, it's almost like I get to walk into your stomach. I get to see what it's like in there, right? If I open your refrigerator, I'm taking a look inside of your stomach and your gut. Basically, I'm getting to kind of take a look. If you really want to succeed, you got to remove all those things because let me tell you, if you keep them in there for guests, for the kids, for whatever, if you keep them in there, man, you are making it so hard to succeed. You've got to find alternatives. The kids need fruits. They need lots of healthy snacks. You've got to be loaded. Like you, when I, when I said it's like a war, right? I mean, like I'm saying like, go stock. Like you got to get prepared for war. You got to get your inventory. What that looks like with weight loss is keeping healthy snacks around. You need different snacks because guess what? The, all the snacks you're going to find out there that you don't prepare, if you don't prepare, are going to be the carb loaded, cheap snacks that are the cheap thrill. Like you said, they're palatable, taste great. They're awful for you. They're going to make you crash. So you have to be prepared for war. You got to have an arsenal of, of things and insulate yourself with these things so that you don't find yourself caught with your pants down in the middle of a battle <laughs> and, and you make it really difficult to succeed. Right. So I just love yeah. everything you're saying. It's, it's, it's just uh, monumental. And it's a change of mindset. It's a change of belief. Okay. I'm in this for the long term. It's not a short term fix. Um, and as you touched it on earlier, your environment, you know, your friends and, your social circle is hugely important. You're the average of the five people you spend most of the time with. I guess you've heard that a lot. You know, it's, it's a very famous quote. And it's, well, yeah, I mean, if three or four of your friends are overweight, 
living an unhealthy lifestyle, bad habits, then there's probably a good chance that you're, you're doing the same thing because you spend most of the time with them, you know? So yeah. really, you know, you've got environmental habits at home, at work, um, in your life, uh, routine, but then with your social circle, who do you spend time with? Um, and sometimes you need to be a little bit selfish because uh, we spoke about earlier, if you um, want to become a better person, person, you have to identify yourself to be the person you wish to become. So that starts for, from well, looking at different relationships. Uh, well, these guys are always working out, you know, they're, they're in great shape. They're always spending time with their family and um, eating a nice diet and, you know, they look good. You know, all these things. Well, if, if that's, you can go into that circle and you imitate and you start to their habits start to brush off on top of you and then you start to adopt them. So uh, this, uh, this is huge, you know, environmentally Absolutely. and social circles, you need to really focus on who are you spending most of your time with? Are they helping you or are they bringing you down? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I remember, you know, hearing about that. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if you think about it, if you were to add up all of your friends' weight, their body weight, and then you were to you were to divide it by five, you might find your weight in there. Yeah. Right. It would be very interesting, right? If you were to add up their income, everybody's income, and you divided it by five, you might find that you were there somewhere around that average, uh, because these people are influencing you for the better, or for the worse. And you also have the opportunity to positively influence them. I know when I quit alcohol, when I quit mm-hmm. cigarettes, I positively influenced my family. My mm-hmm. family has been inspired, uh, through my deciding to quit my friends respect the hell out of me, not drinking, right. When they're all drinking, um, or smoking. And I grew up in a family. I mean, I'm pretty sure I was addicted to cigarettes from secondhand smoke by the time I was like eight or nine years old. I remember wow. thinking they smelled so good. I kind of want one, you know, those kinds of things. It was like eight or nine years old because it was always blown around me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it, my mother still struggles with it. Bless her heart. I love her to death. And I wish she could get past it, but she really struggles with smoking. And, uh, for me in my family, it's like Brandon has done it. You know, Brandon's been able to kick that, you know, which is, I think is a, a great thing. And you can really be that kind of a leader for yourself and your family. And one of the things that happened to me, this was a mindset shift. And I, and I remember whenever this happened, I was like, wow, that's really interesting. It's a, it was a really interesting, like almost like a visceral experience in my body. I had spent been spending time quitting cigarettes. Okay. And I want to, I'm highlighting quitting, quitting cigarettes. And the reason I say quitting, and I want to highlight that is because quitting is a practice or an act. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I'm quitting, it's very present with me. It's something I am actively doing. And I realized how long am I going to be quitting? In other words, when am I actually going to quit? Yeah. Yeah. It is a very different, very different energy around those two words. Oh, yeah. Powerful. Like like you said, it's it's quitting and the act of doing it. So it's a a continuous act. And then you have, when am I going to quit? So you're you're finished. It's done. I'm putting that mark on the table and I, and being passed with it. And I, and I, in, when I realized that distinction in my mind, because what happened is I had kept saying to people, uh, yeah, I'm quitting. And they would say, Oh, way to go. Keep it up. You know, you, you know, man, good luck to you, brother, you know, whatever. And then that weekend we'd be drinking. I'd start smoking a couple cigarettes and the next day I would be done again. It went on like this for a while. And I was saying to people, I'm quitting. Uh, like for example, people that knew me, they'd offer one. I'd say, Oh no, thanks, man. I'm, I'm actually quitting. And it was like, one day I was like, when am I going to stop quitting? When am I going to actually quit? And, uh, and when I, in that day I was like, you know what? I'm not quitting. I'm not even going to tell people I'm quitting anymore. I'm going to frankly tell them I quit. Well, what was interesting is actually people responded differently 
When I said I was quitting from my said I was quit, I quit. When it, what, when it, the difference was this, they were encouraging me whenever I was quitting. They congratulated me whenever I had quit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, powerful. And it's like we just spoke about is identifying yourself who you wish to become. Are you a person that is trying to quit? You're in the process of quitting smoking, or are you the person that has quit smoking? So those are two very different uh, identifications. And when you identify with the person that's quit, then it's like, okay, I'm done. But if you're always in the act of quitting, then you're constantly going to be tempted, constantly going to be thinking about having a cigarette. You know, it's just it's just two different mindsets that are really, really, really powerful. Absolutely. And so like, for example, if you're, if you're dieting, right? Like, oh, I'm dieting right now. Well, that means you have this idea that you're going to stop dieting because you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're just doing this. Oh, right now I'm doing this dieting thing. Yeah. I'm working with this coach. I'm doing, I'm, I'm on this diet. Well, let's, let's take for a moment and say, Hey, no, no, you're not working with this coach and you're on a diet. You're working with this coach and you're becoming a whole new person who lives a completely different lifestyle. And so it's not necessarily a diet the way we think of a diet traditionally, which is like, oh, for 45 days, just do this to burn this, you know, stomach fat. No, no, no. We're changing fundamentally our structures, our routines, what we pick up, what we put down, what we say no to. We're changing it fundamentally for the long term. We're becoming someone new, much, much different than just trying on something, <clears throat> right? We're really becoming that person we've been wanting to become, and we're going to live that lifestyle. When you think about it like this, and because and, it's such a mindset thing, it really is. This is, this is such an important part of um, anything you want to change in your life. But if you think about it like this, if I set two people on stage and I was to ask them to define bread, which sounds kind of crazy, but just I say, just stick with me for a second. I say, hey, I've got two people on stage. One person is fit, they're in shape, you know, they're ripped, they're awesome. The other person wants to lose weight. Okay. And they they've been struggling. And I get them on stage and I say, hey, I want you to define bread for me. Bread is, and just whatever comes to your mind, I want you, I'm going to click. And when I click, you're going to say the first thing that comes to your mind. So bread is, right? And they say, and I'm, and I'm going to ask, for example, the overweight person, the person that's struggling with fat loss. I'm going to say bread is, and I'm going to click, and they're going to say delicious. Bread is, and they're going to say, goes with everything. Bread is, you know, uh, comforting. Bread is uh, tasty. Bread is unhealthy. Bread is full of carbs, right? They might say a few things, okay? Then I would say, which of those do you resonate with the most? It's likely they're going to say that bread is tasty or that bread is delicious or that bread goes with everything, right? It's likely that they're going to identify with that the most. Now, however, if I take the person who's shredded and I were to say right off the top of your head, Bread is, and they're like full of carbs. Bread is unhealthy. Bread is fattening. Bread is a nice treat sometimes, right? What's what we're going to see is the difference in the hierarchy of beliefs. It's the difference in the way that they per, they take and look at that particular item, right? So, if I were to trans the hierarchy of their beliefs over to one another, we would likely see the person who was shredded gain weight. And we'd likely see the person who was overweight, lose weight. That means that you have to be willing to let go of those beliefs that are not serving you and start to adopt and really own the beliefs that will. You have to start to say to yourself and identifying yourself, bread is delicious, is a toxic thought for my body. While I might believe it's true, it is killing me because, and it could be junk food, it could be McDonald's, it could be whatever it is that you make excuses for. Oh, you know, bread's not that bad. 
Whatever that statement is, that is a toxic statement because it's getting you nowhere. However, the beliefs that sound kind of not so fun might be the belief that you need to honor, love, cherish, and uphold. For example, that bread is full of carbs and is going to prevent me from reaching my goals. In that case, bread is kind of evil. I really don't like bread. And it sounds crazy because you might love bread, but you got to get to a place where you say, hold on a second. I'm tricking myself when I tell myself. It's not tricking yourself when you tell yourself that bread is fattening. Actually, that's true. It's tricking yourself when you tell yourself that bread is tasty and delicious and not that bad. If it's the thing that is preventing you from becoming who you want to become. That's the trick. That's when you're tricking yourself. Yeah, that's huge. And and even on that mindset of what, what foods people believe to be fat or unhealthy for, for myself, watching men is, is for us, like no foods are off limits. Mm -hmm. No foods are unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It's just, there is better options and a better alternative. Mm -hmm. So the, the bread, for example, won't directly make you fat or make you gain weight. It's simply just excessive calories, right? Eating too much calories than your body needs to maintain the weight. So that, you know, you can eat a slice of bread every day or you can have a piece of cake every day. Probably not the best for health reasons, for nutrients, vitamins and minerals. But for the most part, you know, if you... If your your calories to maintain weight is two thousand calories, then you can eat a slice of cake every day and not gain weight. But you know, high sugar and then there's a knock on effect of you know eating highly palatable sugar that you tend to make um, uh, worse decisions after that. You know, it's a knock on effect. So for us, like today, you know, I, I myself breakfast this morning, eggs. Um, Panela, which is kind of like a, a, a high protein, low calorie cheese, and avocado with two slices of bread. So it's bread is awesome. It's great. It's just, yeah, like you said, how you look at the bread, you know, do, yeah. you, do you overeat it? Do you look at it in a, in a positive or a negative way? Because um, for us, what we say is, is the best diet is the one that you don't know you're on. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I said bread as an example, and really it could have been anything it could have been smoking, right? We, it, yeah. it, nobody could argue with, nobody could argue with smoking. The main point is like w the way that you believe the, w the, the beliefs that you have around these things, they are sustaining who you are and the beliefs that you, that, that you, a lot of times what uh, the, the bigger idea here is that what happens is we have conflicting beliefs. So for example, there's part of you that wants to, uh, let me just speak for me. There was part of me that wanted to quit smoking. There was another part of me that believed smoking was relaxing. The smoking was social. The smoking was, you know, just kind of a fun thing to do. So my, my point with the belief system part is that when you have these beliefs that that sit there and allow, they kind of infect your ability to get over it. So for example, the belief to me that, oh, smoking is just relaxing. You know, I just do it as a social thing. I'll just do it on the weekends. That belief was keeping me smoking. Mm -hmm. And the belief that, you know, this is actually really cutting off years of my life. This is preventing me from being the role model I want to be for my children. This is preventing me from being who I want to be. Those beliefs, while they sound negative, were really positive beliefs for me because they were things I needed to adopt in order to have the power to overcome those moments where I, where my faulty belief system was, was slipping in. But I think you made a great, great point, Derek. It's not that bread is inherently evil or unhealthy. You're right. Like, it's not that. And actually you can have some of that. Like we said, if you got that metabolism going enough, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all those little different desserts, like that, yeah, you can have a little bit of that. You're not going to feel, you don't have to feel so guilty about dabbling in those things, especially when you have that metabolism going the way 
that we, you know, Derek's talking about, but it's when you are allowing these, these thoughts to slowly just prevent you from ever becoming who you want to become because you keep upholding them. That's, that's kind of my point is you don't want to uphold negative beliefs that sound so positive. They sound so sweet on the outside, but boy, they are just so toxic to you and you have to be ready and willing to identify um, those. So um, Derek, I love that you, fo- you focus on the habits, you focus on starting small, something that someone can sustain um, and, and you're focusing on these triggers and these cues, you're helping them, uh, get really get, uh, this, this whole kind of the system figured out for how they can do it. And really also in not a whole lot of time, because this doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. In fact, um, you know, one of the things I remember learning as a trainer was, uh, 70% and it's sometimes it's even more is of your results are coming from your diet. So if you can correct that, that doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. We're talking changing at the grocery list. We're talking changing where you eat out. Uh, that literally can be a huge part of it. So that doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. It might take some preparation in knowing what you should do. Uh, you know, work with somebody there, you can figure out what you can do, but it does. Uh, but the, the exercise piece doesn't have to be a, a ton of time. Um, can you talk about that? Cause I remember you, I, one of the things I saw is you have a video, for example, here's a 45 minute full body exercise. I'm like that's the kind of exercise that someone could do, or even shorter, but do we, we talk about the training a little bit. Um, cause we've talked a lot about nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. Training, um, is, is not just important for getting results, but also hugely important for, um, mental health, you know, mm-hmm. like how we're feeling, um, how you show up to work, your energy, your, your, your mood. But when it comes to training, it's, yeah, I mean, the, the guys that we coach, like I said, they're, they're high level uh, individuals in their careers and they've mm-hmm. got family as well. So, but the biggest thing that's lacking is, is you know, their health, their, their lifestyle. So time, time is a constraint where we focus on, you know, condensed workouts, optimal workouts, where you're going to get the biggest return on your investment spent in the gym. Because people think about that you're there. That people go to the gym and they just spend time. Like, I'm just spending my time. Right, then, instead yes, of investing it. Yes. So when you're investing, you know, you, the biggest thing you want, you want a return, right? You want a return on the investment. So, but yeah, I mean, we really... We really advocate full body training. Um, Full body training that, you know, you would do three 45-minute workouts per week, which everyone, some guys would come and say, ah, it's too much, I can't. Everyone can do that three Mm -hmm. 45 minutes per week if you really want to live a healthy lifestyle because the reality is, if you don't make time for exercise, then you probably should make time for illness, right? And that's that that burns that's like straight to the heart because it's true, right? If you don't, you, you know, you, you you have one body, one mind, you don't take care of it, then you can expect yourself at the doctors every other week, um, high blood pressure, cholesterol, overweight, um, you know. So Excuse say me. that again, if you don't make time for wellness, you, you need to make time for the doctors. Is that what you said? If you don't make time for exercise, you probably should make time for illness. Illness. That is, wow. That is a statement. I have got to write this down. If you don't make time for exercise, you, you need to make time for illness. That is yeah. really good. It's, it's huge. And so just for talking about training, Strength, strength training, resistance training um, is often going to give you the biggest return. Uh, and what that looks like when we coach our men is, yeah, three hours per week or three 45-minute sessions, full body training. And the, what the strength training does or the resistance or weights, whatever you want to call it, it will give you the biggest return on investment in terms of um, how you look, 
how you feel, feeling strong, confidence, a more efficient metabolism, and also a reduction on injuries because a stronger body becomes more resilient. So with all that taken into account, the weight training resistance offers a huge return on investment. And not to, not to put cardio down is, is not important, um, our guys. What I like to say to our men is when you are training, when you go to the gym, you're there to get stronger, to perform better, to improve on, uh, you know, maybe chest press or some of the movements you were doing last week. So the mindset in the gym is, is that you're there to get stronger. When you have that mindset, the results will become much easier because people go to the gym and they think, oh, I'm here to lose weight. I'm here to lose fat, right? So they jump on the treadmill, they jump on uh, the bike and, and they go for like an hour or two hours. So the mindset shift is you're in the gym to be stronger, to increase your metabolism, to feel good, to look good. And your, car, your, 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 your tool for fat loss is going to be outside of the gym. So how active you are, how many steps you do, like 10,000 steps per day, or is it 4,000 because you've not scheduled in or time to walk, taking the stairs against the, the lift or the escalator or, you know, so outside of the gym is where we use the tool for fat loss is being active and obviously what you're eating is, is 80% of getting results. So our template traditionally is full body training, maybe six exercises in that workout that, you know, you would, you would hit all the body parts, legs, chest, back, um, abs, um, and, and, and that's it, 30, 45 minutes, and it's effective, it gets results, and it's enjoyable. I love your distinctions. I love that distinction. When you're in the gym, you're there to strength train. You're there to look good, feel good. That's the part of what you're doing. When you're outside the gym, that's when you're really doing the weight loss stuff. It's happening in your diet and your steps you're taking in mm -hmm. your active lifestyle. Um, I really, really, really love that. I, I, I really like that distinction. And, um, I love this quote. If you don't make time for exercise, you need to make time for illness. And you said early, earlier too, right before all of that, you had said that, you know, really uh, this exercise is much more than just for your weight loss. That's what maybe you think you're wanting it for, but it's for your mental health. It's for your, well, it's for your performance. Mm -hmm. I think I, um, well, I, I know I read it somewhere, but I can't exactly remember who said it, but they were saying that, uh, 15 minutes, which is not a ton of time, but like 15 minutes of exercise is like taking a small dose of Prozac and Ritalin and it affects the same neurotransmitters. And so you're essentially, uh, it's almost like you're taking a little bit of medication to relax and a little bit of medication to focus. And it's just through some exercises, through getting your body into motion, you're triggering these things. So maybe you feel stressed. Maybe you don't feel focused. Maybe you need to relax and you need more attention. This exercise is going to help kick your body into that. The other thing is um, a lot of times people feel tired. There's a huge surge in energy drinks right now. Everybody wants energy drinks. And one of the things I found that is counterintuitive is that when you are not exercising, you feel more tired. You feel like you don't have energy. So the idea that, oh, I would love to exercise, but I really just don't have a lot of energy. It's so funny that if you exercise, you would have more energy for exercise. <laughs> so you almost got to get the motor going. You know, you got to jumpstart it. The other thing I found is like, we talked about how if you read a sentence, you're likely to read a paragraph, read a paragraph, you're likely to read a page. That if you are to re if you are to start the exercise or show up at the gym, right? That's what they say. Just show up. You're going to get things going. the The hurdle is the hurdle is actually starting. The hurdle, the challenge is the start. It's not actually uh, the whole exercise because it's really just that moment. It's almost like pulling the lawnmower pull. You know, once the mower is going, then the the, the flywheel is kind of started up. You just got to get started. Yeah, just, and, and that goes with what you just said about 
you know, reading a book is starting small. You know, um, the biggest thing with the hardest thing about going to the gym is, is waking up. You know, once you're there, like you said, once you're there, like, you know, there's the workout is inev- inevitable. It's just waking up or creating um, other lifestyle changes to to make that waking up easier. You know, like we said about the TV and going to bed earlier. So it starts really the night before when it comes to the training aspect because if when it, w- with the men that we coach, if you leave the workout to later in the day, you know, but as the day goes on, it becomes less and less chance that it's going to get done. So, and if you leave that to will, willpower alone, then forget about it. Like willpower won't get you there. It's, Especially it, if you waited because willpower goes down as the day goes on. Yeah. So, you know, work out in the morning is, is, is what we always advise. Get the workout in start your day, energy levels, moods, ultimate high, feeling good, um, positive. And so that's when it starts. Um, yeah. It's funny for me when I, when I work out in the morning, I feel like I've already won. <laughs> like I already yeah. feel like I've won the day. Like everything else is just icing on the cake. As long yeah. as I get that, that in, in the morning. Well, Derek, what, th- Oh, go for it. What was key about that? Um, was speaking about training. Okay, morning's probably better. The the the, the training routine. What do you want to be doing? You always have this debate, and what is best for losing weight or getting in shape, weights or cardio, right? What's What's awesome about doing weights is yeah, you do your workout in the morning before you start work. Is that your body's going to be burning more calories throughout the whole day right. from lifting the weights up to 12 hours. So, yes, which is awesome. You know, you're constantly burning calories because you've just had a big full body session. You're feeling good, feeling pumped. Everything is just like you said, you, you feel like you've won the day. Like everything is just going. It's a, it's a domino effect. Like I said, the lead domino, if that's the lead domino for you, if you already work out, but you're doing cardio all the time and you're not seeing results then the lead dominoes okay we'll start changing to some resistance training see that you're going to be burning more calories throughout the day the dopamine high the full body training um the positive outlook and and then with the cardio is oh yeah i mean the cardio is is a great tool for fat loss right it's a great a great tool that we use you probably will burn more calories in one hour of cardio against one hour of weights However, the rest of the day from the weight training, you're going to be burning mm-hmm. more calories. So really, a combination of two is awesome. Um, we always right. do emphasize a little bit more towards the resistance. The resistance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of people think it's easier to go to the gym and just jump on a bike or jump on a treadmill because it's pretty obvious what to do. And it's intimidating sometimes to go and pick up some equipment. You think you're kind of doing things right. Are you doing it wrong? You know, does it this, is it that? Uh, but at the same time, resistance training, like you said, you're going to build muscle that's going to burn calories all day. It takes calories to rebuild the muscle you tore down. Um, and so you're building, you're burning muscle all day long as opposed to that cardio where it's an isolated event. And so I love, I love that you point out Derek, this has been awesome, man. I really enjoyed uh, getting to have you on and uh, definitely want to have you on again. Will you tell the listeners where can they uh, find you? Um, where are you most active and and how can they look you up? Awesome. Yeah, it's been a pleasure to connect, Brandon. Um, so for myself, I'm always active on Instagram. You can find me at Coach Stark underscore um, LinkedIn, just Derek Stark. And then uh, my website also, uh, coach-stock.com. That's great. And guys, uh, if you do decide to work with Derek, just send him over um, that you have come from Be Dadly. Uh, let him know so we can get you a discount on uh, on some training packages. 
And I just want to encourage you, if you are dealing with weight loss, if this is something that you've been struggling with, you've had ups and downs, you've tried to do it on your own, you've done the crash diet, you resonate with that. You've done the cardio bikes, you resonate with that. If this is resonating with you, I want to encourage you to get a coach, get a coach. Maybe you resonated with Derek here, but just get a coach. Here's why. When you have a trainer and you have somebody on your side, you have the wealth of their knowledge focused on you, focused on your results. And I'm going to tell you something. It takes a lot. There's so many different things that you have to learn. Just like you in your career had to learn a a lot of different things to benefit other people, to do the most and to have the best impact with others. That's what coaches do for you. So to have somebody just focus on you, focus on what you need, what's going to help you get those results, you're going to shortcut everything. And I know it seems like it's a lot to spend, but just as Derek said in here, it's not about spending. It's about investing. And if you're not uh, investing in your wellness, guess what? You're going to be spending on your illness and you're not going to enjoy that. Okay. It costs a lot more for doctor bills. Uh, you're going to cut off years of your life by, by not investing in your wellness. So just want to encourage you, if you feel like you're resonating with this, if it inspires you, man, take action. The quicker you take action, it's literally, it's look up, you know, coach-stark.com and click to get a session. Like just do that little bitty thing. That little thing can be the thing that starts everything else. It's these small little actions that lead to big outcomes. And this might be the one for you today. Thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you guys very much. Uh, Yeah. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, like, do all the stuff you know to do to help us with the algorithm so we can reach more dads just like you. We love you guys and we hope you have a beautiful and blessed day. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you've received some value from it, please share it with other dads and consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcast platform, and we'll see you in the next episode. Looking for support with your fatherhood journey? Go to BeDadly.com and take our Dadly Disposition quiz and learn helpful insights on how you can overcome power struggles with your kids. Hey dads, this is John Prophet with BeDadly.com. Just wanted to let you know we have a new sponsor coming on board. That sponsor is Genesee Nutrition. One of our earlier podcast guests, Will Carr, is the founder of that company. And basically they're nutrition bars. They're very, very good tasting nutrition bars. Great for taking on the trail or, you know, an impromptu little day trip. You can just throw them in your backpack and be ready to rock. And so as a sponsor, we are offering our listeners a 15% discount. So if you go to GeneseeNutrition.com and make your order, be sure to put in code BDADLY15 and you'll get 15% off of your order. So yeah, if you're a nutrition bar aficionado, go ahead and check them out at GeneseeNutrition.com and make sure to use your coupon code BDADLY15. Thanks for listening.